Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to SWF Shootout. We are a few days removed from our pay-per-view Southern Stampede. And man, oh man, what a pay-per-view it was. We'll get into all the matches here tonight in Austin, Texas, just a few hours away from our hometown. But let's get right into these matches. Well, folks, we are starting things off as the Fallen Kingdom make their way down to the ring. And, oh, my God, here comes the Son of Carnage. Now, at the pay-per-view, the Fallen Kingdom got the victory over Sons of Carnage. And it looks like they're here to deal a little bit of payback right off the bat. Bruiser Brad getting his head kicked by the much smaller, much smaller James Gaines. And it looks like... Malcolm Black and Jesse Newman are going to start things off here tonight. Oh, oh man, oh geez, Malcolm Black's face bounced right off that middle turnbuckle pad. My goodness. Now these guys have been going at it for about a month now. And at the pay-per-view, it culminated to the Fallen Kingdom getting the victory over the Sons of Carnage. And I don't think they were too happy about it. Malcolm Black and Jesse Newman have had their battles quite a bit throughout the past month. And it looks like they are just not done yet. Big Pele kick to the back of the head of Newman as he crumbles to the ground. Malcolm Black, though. Oh. Oh, boy. Got him up. Oh, face first into the... Almost into that turnbuckle. As Jesse Newman uses that same turnbuckle to pull himself up to his feet. Oh, nice re inverse Olympic slam from Black, but a reversal from Newman. Jawbreaker right there. Into the corner goes Black and a reversal. Oh, reversal from everybody here. Throughout this rivalry, the Fallen Kingdom and Malcolm Black have had the upper hand. Um, and, that, and a win doesn't necessarily... Oh, man. A... A win doesn't necessarily mean you have the upper hand. Going into the pay-per-view, they were 2-2, two and two, more or less. Jesse Newman and Malcolm Black went back and forth quite a bit. But the Fallen Kingdom have won every tag match. Oh. Oh, big kick and a knee. And right into a Northern Lights. Very cool move. And a pin. One. No. My goodness. So, as far as tag matches go, face first goes Malcolm Black. The Fallen Kingdom are up on the Sons of Carmid, Carnage. Excuse me. 2-0. and 2-0. Oh. and oh. Now, as a whole, the Fallen Kingdom are undefeated. As a whole, the Sons of Carnage are winless. But then you've got Thriller and the Clutch that are 2-0. Um, the Birth, who are your current Gunslinger champions, they went into Southern Stampede and defeated Leo and the Sleaze after Leo and the Sleaze won those titles at the Gold, uh, excuse me, at the uh, Deuces Wild Tag Team Pay-Per-View Special Event. So they weren't, uh, oh man, neckbreaker by Newman. Leo and the Sleeves have a long way to go to be cohesive as a team. As we see Black and... Oh, and oh, big double shoulder block. Look at this. Oh, man, I'm splitting him in half. Wishbone and Malcolm Black here. Leo and the Sleeves have got a way to go as we see the DDT from Newman and the pin. One, two. Brad's not coming in. Malcolm kicks out. The Birth, though, coming in, winning their matchup. Oh, Newman went for the cutter, and Black reversed it. Winning their matchup, winning those tag team championships, and they are, are, they are now your gunslinger champions. Knee to the, geez, knee right to the face. 
but doesn't go for the pin, and Malcolm Black with the European uppercut. Black's got to get out of this match. Dropping Gaines right on the back of his head. A lot of interesting matchups at Southern Stampede Pay-Per-View. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you go back, check it out. We also had the eight-man ladder match for the open roster spot. Let me tell you something, that was wild. That was a pretty wild matchup. And, uh oh we got the rings of Saturn here locked in on Gaines. We've seen a few people tap out to this. Is Gaines, the ref's right there? No, Gaines fights out of it. That matchup, that eight-man ladder match for the contract was crazy. In the end, Robert Hall is your new roster member. After he got to the top of the ladder, and nobody stopped him. He got the he got the uh, contract and and now is part of the SWF roster. And look at Bruiser Bread taking it to James Gaines here. Oh my God, that might have been just a regular gut kick. Look at the size difference. But geez, jerking the big man down. He's very top heavy with that massive dome. Bruiser Brad's head is bigger than the torso of Gaines. This is ridiculous. This shouldn't even be allowed. You shouldn't even be a real person this big. Bruiser Brad's got Gaines up in a sidewalk slam. Center of the ring. Uh-oh. Is Brad going to get there? No. Gaines gets Newman. And in comes Jesse Newman. And Bruiser Brad shuts it down. Single leg Boston Crab. And he is cranking away at the back. Really pulling on that leg. And he kicks Bruiser Brad away. And nice reversal from Brad. A little arm drag. A little technical wrestling from the big man. And that's just pure powerhouse right there. That is pure powerhouse right there. Into the corner now, but, uh, but Gaines isn't there. But it doesn't seem to make a difference. Flipping over and face first goes Bruiser Brad. Oh, Jesse Newman doesn't go for the pin and this is why DDT to the big man. Can he hold on with the pin and he kicks out. Malcolm Black did come in though but it wasn't necessary. Big cutter, that could be it right there. These guys could finally get their victory. Over the Fallen Kingdom and a two count. Man, just James, excuse me, Jesse Newman is wondering what he's got to do here. Probably not that big knee to the face of Gaines. And now look at Bruiser Brad. He's going to lock it in. Really cranking away. Might be fish hooking him a little bit. But could this put the, nope. Gaines, er, Jesse Newman gets out of it. Brad trying to crawl over to Malcolm Black. Not able to get there in time in a clothesline there. Followed by an elbow. Brad sends Newman into the corner and he dodges it. Big kick right to the face. Back into the ring now. And again that DDT. Quickly going for the pin. Wise move there from Newman. Two. And Malcolm Black doesn't come in. And Jesse Newman and James Gaines get the victory here on Shootout. Their first victory in SWF as a tag team. That's right. That's right. They get the victory over the Fallen Kingdom to open up Shootout here tonight. Your winners, Sons of Carnage. Here we go, second matchup of the night. And it involves one of, if not the darkest member of our roster, and that is Lord Draven. He is coming in at one and two. The last time we saw Lord Draven was a few episodes back. He took on Vice in which he did lose that matchup. Oh my gosh look at this massive thing he's wearing on his head and 
intimidation tactics at their best right here. The glowing eyes of Draven. Now he came in, he was part of uh, the tag team with, I believe it was Zach Graves or Kid Hades. I'm, I'm, I'm not totally sure. I can get that information for you, but uh, did not make it past the first round. I do know that. And um, and then we're, you know, Draven has had a checkered past here in SWF, and I'm not quite sure how that's that's totally happened. Draven's a scary dude. He can fight. He's got the Dark Ministry behind him. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Holy sure. So he was with uh, Kid Hades as Darkness Falls as he took on Ebony and Ivory, who ended up winning and getting all the way to the semifinals before losing to Leo and the Sleeves. Draven coming in in the pure darkness. Definitely not something you want to run into in a dark alley. You see that Mastodon looking at you. Yeesh. His opponent, though, is somebody that we really haven't seen from a lot. And that is Hunter King. He was in the very first episode in an eight-man tat or excuse me, eight-man over-the-top battle royal. Draven was also part of that matchup to determine the number one contender for the Mavericks Championship, and Jay Wolf won that matchup. And then we saw him again um, in the faces and versus freaks matchup, which he faced off against Lord Draven. He teamed up with Leo McKay, Lance Romance, and Vice to take on Zach Ray, Lord Draven, Kid Hades, and Evelyn Reeves. Evelyn Reeves, we will see by this season. But they ended up losing that matchup. The freaks beat the faces, which was interesting to say the least. But since then, we haven't seen Hunter King. Uh, that was way back on episode four. So I'm interested to see what happened. We, did, we didn't see um, Lord Draven until after Gold Rush pay-per-view on episode five. So we haven't seen either one of these guys in quite some time. So I'm interested to see. We will be seeing um, more of these guys, some of the people that for lack of a better phrase, haven't been doing so well. Uh, maybe, I think I'm gonna do it um, with maybe two losses or more. Maybe it should be one loss or one win or less because some of the two, two, uh, two win as this match gets started here and Draven starts things off big, big right hand, excuse me, left hand. My King, and he's going to send Draven over the top rope. And the cockiness of Hunter King, I love it. Um, some of the people that are 2-0, and oh, or at least have two wins, are the top 12. And then the people that have one win or less are the bottom 15. So we will, which include huge names, Omari Williams, Alex Corzo, your former... Uh, Rebellion and Lone Star Champion. We've got James Frost in there. Siler Jordan, who totally owned SWF last season, has not won a match yet here in SWF. That was quite interesting. We've got Ryan Adams, Lance Romance, and Leo McKay rounding it out with no wins, five losses. Five losses as an individual, which is surprising. But those guys are all, we're going to see them on our other show called revolver that is going to be a matches only show we will not uh, have any commentary over those matches we're going to get right into the action with that bounces off the ropes and a big knee good lord that bicycle knee puts Draven down and now look at Hunter King oh man what a power bomb that was and a pin and just a one count Hunter King kind of in control of this matchup, and I hope I don't 
give him the commentator's curse as so it seems to normally happen here. Big kick to the midsection. He's got Draven up, walking towards the turnbuckle. Big buckle bomb. Back first goes Draven. And now King's going to pull him to the center of the ring. Oh, stomping on the elbow. Hunter King um, also last season not having the greatest go of things and a big knee drop to the face. Oh, bouncing off of that bottom rope. That probably didn't feel great. Kicking Draven away, though. And Hunter King, he's fired up. Over the top goes Draven again. Over the top goes Draven again. So Hunter King is actually 0-2. As Draven kicks, uh, catches that. Lord Draven is 1-2. This includes 8-man matches, tag team matches, all that stuff. So Hunter King has got something to prove here. Ref, you might want to step aside. And he does just in time as King drives that knee right into the face of Lord Draven. DDT from Hunter King. Quickly going for the pin. One, two, no. Draven kicks out at two, and King cannot believe it. He has been in full control this whole matchup. Kick to the midsection now, and look at this. Got him up. Double underhooks. Holy Toledo, what a move that was. One, two. Wow. Draven kicks out. It's like a double underhook, spinning neckbreaker type move in frustration from King right there as the double stomps. But Draven not quite ready to give up just yet. Drives him head first into the mat and the pin. Ref counting two count from Draven. King's able to kick out. And now look at this. Hooking him up in this submission move, completely stretching him out. Is King going to tap or is he going to stick it out? He, wow, quickly, quickly fights out of it and elbows right to the bridge of the nose of Draven. Hunter King goes for the kick to the midsection. Has him up. Huge power bomb, lung blower, and the pin. One, two. No, a kick out at two. Excuse me while I take a drink. Big elbow by Draven. And a massive clothesline knocking both men down. Uh-oh. Draven's going up to the top rope. Turning around. Going for a huge moonsault. And Hunter King steps out of the way. Or slides out of the way, I should say. Double underhooks. DDT. And Draven going for the pin. Two. No. King shoves Draven off of him. And a jawbreaker right there. Big right hand. Oh, man. Sister Abigail's busted Draven open. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice seems to be going here. Pump handle face buster and King quickly with the pin. One, two. Oh my goodness. Draven is not ready to give up. King is throwing everything he's got at him. Face or a, a jawbreaker there. Drops him on his head. My goodness. Draven getting down for the pin. Two, no, just a two count. And what do these guys got to do to each other to get the win? King probably wants this win so much as he has not won yet here in SWF. I had high hopes for Mr. King this season. Sometimes the cards just don't fall in your favor. And that seems to be the case. And here comes Draven. He is getting King up to his feet in the center of the ring. Second DDT. Double arm DDT 
Shades of Cactus Jack there. Three count and Lord Draven gets the victory over Hunter King. My goodness. Quite unexpected as, as we saw how that match was playing out. Draven busted open and bloody. Hunter King kind of had control of that matchup. And look at Draven. You animal. The match is over. Somebody get in there and stop this madness right now. What a matchup between Hunter King and Lord Draven. We will see Hunter King on Revolver later on this week. Making his way down is somebody who has been undefeated pretty much his, well, he has been undefeated his whole career here in SWF. And his newcomer, the savage, John Robb. Now, something that we did see that we weren't expecting. Well, some people weren't expecting. He definitely didn't expect it. John Robb received his first loss of the season. He was 3-0. He lost to Brett Storm, who last month was on every show. Given the op opportunity by Puma to come in, he was on every show from Gold Rush to Southern Stampede. And I believe he only lost one of those matches, and it was against SDC in Episode 6. So he beat Elliot Collins. Well, first at Gold Rush pay-per-view, Brett Storm. You know what? Brett Storm's coming up soon. We'll talk about him when it's his time. Right now it is the time for Savage John Robb and Mason Foster. My point being was no longer undefeated. There are, There's not a single undefeated person here in SWF. Right now we have some high wins, low loss people. Jay Wolf, your Maverick champion, six and one. SDC, your Lone Star champion, five and one. Kid Hades, three and one. John Robb, three and one. Zach Graves, two and one a lot of people are at the very top now we have 30 people in this uh, in this the, what am I trying to say in this federation Lord. and right now do we have 30 people I might have to go back and count so of the top half, there's quite a few people with only one loss. Mason Foster has three losses, but he has two wins. So, do you say, well, you're one, you're one match under 500, or, you know, are you on some kind of a streak? Now, Mason Foster had a matchup against Ryan Riley in the very first episode, which he lost big knee to the face. Then he faced off um, in that eight-man tag or eight-man battle royal, which Bruiser Brad won. Which I mean, can't blame him there. He got a victory over Lance Romance the night after Gold Rush. He did lose to Brett Storm during that whole thing. He beat Duke Zenda after Duke did was, he counted himself out. It was uh, the night before Southern Stampede. Duke didn't want to fight. He went out there, got himself counted out, um, and that was that. And now here we are tonight. So it's Mason Falls this season. Look at John Robb with that big slam. Now, John Robb started out with not being in a federation, not being in our federation anyway. He won a fatal four-way matchup against Hades, Jackson Montgomery, Zach Graves. Big kick there from Foster. He then went on to beat Elliot Collins. He then went on to beat Omari Williams. Knee breaker from Foster into an insecurity. Nice move there. 
And then he ended up facing, uh, well, he was going to face Duke Zenda. But SDC came out and attacked him, attacked Duke Zenda. We never got to see that Lone Star Champion versus Savage John Robb matchup. Then Brett Storm defeated him, giving him his first loss here in SWF. And that's where we are now. So I'm interested to see what does that mean? Does that mean John Robb wants redemption? John Robb wants to get back on track? Is Mason Foster even going to let him? Is even, I mean, Mason Foster put a lot of stock into Duke Zenda not wanting to fight him. And Duke getting counted out. So Foster thought, that must mean I'm doing something right. Look at John Robb here. Got him up. And a big last ride power bomb. Goes for the pin here. This could be a quick one. Two, no, and a kick out. A kick out by Mason Foster. So now, I don't know. I'm thinking John Robb has got a lot of built-up animosity, possibly towards Brett Storm, possibly just due to the fact that he lost a matchup here. I mean, 3-0 is nothing to, to sneeze at. 3-1 and one isn't either. And I don't know how that makes John Robb feel. Mason Foster, on the other hand, not 100% uh, part of of uh, the Fallen Kingdom. But still part of the Fallen Kingdom. They're doing their thing. Foster wanted to run out, see what he could do singles-wise, and he takes the legs out of uh, from under John Robb. And let's see. Uh-oh. Foster now going at all the limbs of the Texan here from Fort Worth. And he's going to pick him right up. Oh, big uppercut from John Rob. Uh-oh. Are we going to see it again? Center of the ring this time. No. Dear Lord. Yes, we are. Huge power bomb. He got kind of threw us for a loop there. It looked like he might have been going to power bomb him outside the ring. Goes for the pin now. Oh, at the very last second. At the very last second, Mason Foster kicks out. Uh-oh. Picking Foster up by his friggin' neck and throwing him like a sack of potatoes. And now John Robb just taking everything out. Uh-oh. Look at this submission hold. Right by the ropes. He's got to let it go. And a nice reversal there from Foster. And another knee breaker very close to the ropes. Big side slam. Oh, and John Robb slides out of the ring. Probably a smart move there. But he gets caught. Uh-oh. A lot happening right there. Looked like Robb was going to get the reversal. Is Foster, oh no, it looked like Foster might have been trying to steal his move, but unable to get a hold of it. Look at this, sit out knee breaker. And John Robb is on a tear right now. Fireman's carry into a power bomb, dear Lord. Pinning him in the corner. And a two count. And a two count. Look at him. He is cranked up. Big shot. And now, oh, man. Back body drop into a side slam and goes for the pin. One, two, that's it. That is it. John Robb gets himself back in the green, if you will. I mean, and I guess he never really left, but John Robb gets the victory. He's got to be up there, I would think. It's some sort of title shot at some point, I would think so. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, the savage John Robb. 
Well, folks, we'll definitely be seeing Hunter King on Revolver right now is something extremely special, I think, based on what's been going on lately here in SWF. Clearly, we are inviting to the ring your new SWF Lone Star Champion, everybody. Look at the title around the waist of SDC, the hero of wrestling. He holds that championship after defeating Duke Zenda at Southern Stampede. He's kind of a a surprising entrance, if you want to call that. I mean, he attacked Duke Zenda uh, earlier in the month. And then these two just really started going at it before SDC. He pretty much had the upper hand throughout the month. And it culminated at Southern Stampede where SDC got the victory and holds the SWF Lone Star Championship. But his opponent here tonight is no slouch as of the last month and we just talked about him a little bit ago. His opponent here tonight in this non-title matchup is Brett Storm who could just as uh, fairly and just as equally be challenging for this championship. Duke Zenda, of course, getting his opportunity to get it back, but Brett Storm has been just on a complete tear as of late. And he's got a viable gripe and deserves to be at, talked about in that upper echelon here at SWF this season. Um, and needs to somehow put himself in position to get this championship. And this might be the way to do it. Does he get a victory over the Lone Star champion? And who knows what that means for him. If it even gets that far. We know Duke Zenda is in the building. And if Duke Zenda has some uh, beef with SDC, who knows what's going to happen. But Brett Storm, if I'm not mistaken, has had more matches than anybody else in SWF. He has had a total of eight matches in nine episodes and two pay-per-views. So eight matches and 11 shows where the next best is Duke with seven matches. So, and then Jay Wolf with seven and SDC with six. So Brett Storm, he got that opportunity at Gold Rush to prove himself and then to be on every card coming down the pipe. And he and and his only loss in that span came at the hands of SDC. That very episode where SDC defeated Brett Storm, SDC went out and attacked Duke Zenda and inserted himself into the Lone Star Championship picture. That was the same night we were going to see John Robb face Duke Zenda undefeated versus undefeated, but that never happened. So now, SDC's the Lone Star Champion. Duke Zenda's in the building. Brett Storm looks to get some sort of revenge over his uh, only loss in, what, six weeks? Out, out, of, out of, you know, a handful of matches? So... Well, here comes Duke. I, I mean, we knew he was in the building. But does he? is he coming out here to distract SDC? Brett Storm really looking on. This might be Brett's opportunity to take a shot at SDC. We know Brett Storm is not, uh, not above just cracking a dude in the back of the skull. Duke comes over to sit down in the... In the chair, I'm just watching. He says he's just here to, he's just here to look. The ref trying to get this match underway, and here we go. The bell is finally rung, and geez, SDC comes out of the gate with a huge slingshot or sling blade, I should say, and now working over the arm 
of Brett Storm. He knows what that arm can do. That elbow can and has just straight knocked fools out. Just blasting dudes with that elbow, and it is rough. And when we've also seen this, Brett Storm, the brutality of Brett Storm, kicking into the kidneys area, kicking his opponents in the face before wrenching over on the wrist and then double knees to the back. We've seen that so many times before. Brett Storm now is SDC up and catches a jawbreaker and a single leg drop kick from the hero of wrestling. And your Lone Star champion. I'm still I'm still amazed that Duke um, was defeated at Southern Stampede. He won that title at Gold Rush in a triple threat match against Siler Jordan and Alex Corzo. And then just like that, transitional champ. I hate to say it, uh, Duke is, has always been a part of SWF for as long as we've been around. And uh oh, oh my goodness, what a knee to the face of Brett Storm. And look at this dragon suplex style, or excuse me, dragon sleeper. And oh, nice job there. Oh, and a kick to the back by Brett Storm. SDC, uh, as mentioned many times before, uh, was teamed up with Dino D, and they, they were a tag team last season before Dino, uh-oh, into the turnbuckle. And Duke is waving SDC down here. All right, we got to get some order. We've got to get some order in this thing. Duke, uh-oh, here comes Brett Storm. What did I say? Big shot to the face. Brett Storm is not above cracking a dude in the skull to get what he wants. Now, if you remember back, Brett Storm and SDC, uh, excuse me, Brett Storm and Duke Zenda teamed up in the tag team tournament where Duke tapped out. He tapped out, and uh, Brett never really let him forget that. But they seem to uh, kind of work as a team there. Maybe the enemy of my enemy is my friend something like that I believe that's right <laughs> so Brett Storm now hooking up with look at this nice move there by Storm great suplex and he goes down for the pin on the Lone Star Champ and a kick out at, at just one now the the high that the Lone Star Champ has been on mixed in with the high that Brett Storm has been on this is a this is a crapshoot. This is a toss-up. Who is going to come out on top? Now with Duke at gone at ringside. Oh my goodness! And oh, Storm takes a shot to the midsection as he hits the mat, but quickly with that judo-style reversal. Uh oh. Going up top. This not might not be good in a knee to the face. Oh, kicked him out of the way. Pushes Storm into the turnbuckle and Storm with a reversal. Hanging SDC up on the middle rope. And a drop kick right under the arm into the kidneys area. Nice move by Brett Storm. That was very, I like that. And in the spear, the huge spear, but he's not going to get the breath. He's on the ropes for crying out loud. Storm, I'm rooting for you, my man, but the guy's head was on the ropes and the ref didn't see it. Big spear and a running knee. We've seen the running knee put everybody down. Two, and it does with Brett Storm as well. My goodness, that was an unexpected shot with that running knee after the huge spear. But your Lone Star champion, ladies and gentlemen, gets the victory. I don't think this takes away from Brett Storm in any way. I still think he believe he belongs in the upper echelon. We'll see as time goes on. SDC is your winner here tonight. Evelyn Reeves in the ring, and look, here comes Kid Hades attacking Jay Wolf. And he is going ham on the Maverick champion. Now, Kid Hades. I'm not sure if you are aware, is the number one contender for the Maverick Championship after 
Jay Wolf defeated Seb Abbott. So that's what that attack seemed to be all about. And Jay Wolf is furious. Big power slam to Evelyn Reeves. Jay Wolf is um, six and one. Whoa! What a move by Evelyn Reeves. It looked like Wolf had the upper hand there. Catches him with a Hurricane Rana. Evelyn Reeves is one and three. So Evelyn Reeves will be on Revolver as we see these guys really try to work themselves back to the top. And as mentioned before, Revol Revolver will be no commentary. It will be strictly matches. Big right hand to the face. Jeez. And if it becomes necessary, Revolver will become a second show. We'll see. We'll see. Face first goes Evelyn Reeves by Jay Wolf. The attack by Kid Hades. My goodness. And the pin now by Wolf 1. Just a one count. Oh. Dodging out of the way. Hey, oh gosh. Evelyn comes right in and catches a huge military press slam by Jay Wolf. It doesn't look like Evelyn Reeves has a chance. If I'm not mistaken, these guys have faced off uh, once before a couple of weeks ago, and Jay Wolf got the victory there in a one count. Evelyn doing what he can, trying to get a, a sneak victory maybe over the Maverick champion and the holder of the Lone Star Championship briefcase kicked to the knee. Look at this. Up and over into a pile driver by Evelyn Reeves. Ref is down. Just a one count. So the initial plan was to have the Maverick Championship be that Lone Star Championship contract. Whenever Jay wanted to, he would give up that championship for an opportunity at the, Ma at the Lone Star Championship as he goes for the pin here. But I'm going to split that up. I'm going to split that up. So if Jay decides to cash in, he has that opportunity to do so as the briefcase holder. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. He's got him up for the full moon. Driving Evelyn Reeves head first into the mat, and that could be it. As Jay Wolf pulls him out to go for the pin here. Two, and he does. He does. He gets the victory despite the attack by Kid Hades. Jay Wolf is your winner. I'm interested to see what out happens with Kid Hades and Jay Wolf, if, if Jay's gonna continue to dominate. Or is Kid Hades gonna be the one to take that title away from him? We shall see. Thank you all so much for watching. Come on back soon. We'll be here for Revolver.